everybody and welcome to episode seven of the Tactics Board. I'm Natalie Pike and as always I'm joined by Carl who has had his hair cut. Carl, I, yeah. I think you've had highlights. I haven't had highlights. It's probably just a bit, a bit of sun. I've been on holiday, you see. I've been to Wales, so maybe it's the sun. The Welsh okay. sun is giving you those blonde highlights. Yeah, what do you think? Do you like it? I like it. Schnazzy, you look, you look sharp, mate. Sharp, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. I always appreciate mate? that you tidy your kitchen as well before you come on. You know what? If I showed you just behind this corner, it's just like shoved. Everything's just like, oh, no, I've got a corner now. Shove it all to the side. But yeah. Are you okay, yeah. mate? Yes, I'm fine. Thank you. Fine. Thank you. Busy week. Yeah, lots of games. Getting into that really busy time of the season with the, with being a Manchester City fan with loads of games. So, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah, it's a funny smirk. You got anything you want to say? No, no, nothing. I just a busy time, isn't it? You've got to, attend all those games as a Manchester City fan, so yeah. I do, thank you. <laughs> yes, you do, you definitely do, yeah. Fair yes. Right. I won't say anything else, Pep said it all, so I don't need to say anything, do I? Oh, Pep, Pep was misunderstood. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, how did you, well, if you, first of all, if you've not joined our league yet, what are you doing? We're on the Sky Sports Fantasy Football League, and our pin is 997. 6717, I still don't know it off by heart. 997-6717. Uh, go on out, follow us, join our league. Uh, really? Because we give we're doing competitions throughout the, the season, um, spot ones, so you can join at any time. So go on, join our league. It's worth registering for some of the prizes that we're going to be giving away. So, Carl, how was your week? Um, my fantasy football week, it wasn't great to be honest. Um, I got 58 points, but I got how many? four. 58. 58, that's all right. Yeah, it is, but I got four players that got me zero. And it's because I went away, because I went to Wales. There's no signal in Wales where I went. Oh. So I couldn't make my like captain changes. I couldn't make any subs. Mendy was injured. My goalkeeper wasn't starting and a few others. So, yeah. That's your excuse. You went to Wales and there was no reception. I went to Wales, got new highlights and... Um, you, no you, were in, you were in the hairdressers when you should have been <laughs> changing your fantasy team. Yeah, that's what it was. How did you get on? I got 79 last week. I had a good oh, week. Very um, good. But I was one of many players that had Alexander Arnold, who obviously didn't play, who sort of mm-hmm. unexpectedly um, was ill or picked up an injury, I forget, um, on the day of the game. So I had him that got me nil. Um, but I had captained Salah, which is always... Yeah, very good. Yeah. Have you, you've got Salah, but did you not have him as captain? No, I didn't have him as captain because I didn't have time to change my captain. My captain was the same as last week and um, there was, I didn't have time. I should have. That's what's annoying. This is where, usually, my relationship with fantasy football falls out because if you just miss one, you're like, oh, I could have had an extra 20-odd points. Do you know what I mean? If you just... Yeah. Mate, I had him captain, so you got 15, but because I had him as captain, I got 30, so... See what I mean? See what I mean? Yeah. And then you missed out on having the captain for each game day as well, so... I did. Yeah. <sighs> anyway. I'm tactically going to make some substitutions before the end of the week because I don't have anybody now. I forget the fixtures all of a sudden. I don't have anybody in my team, I think, for Sunday's games or Monday. So I'm going to make some tactical substitutions. Yeah, there's a game Sunday and Monday, isn't there, this week? So, yeah. yeah. So that I'm covering a captain for every game. Advisable. Yes. Yes, fully. Now, I should say, on my little script here that, 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 that is written for us, it says, and I'll read it out because that Go is on. my job. Go on. There is a Harry Kane-sized hole in Man City's team and all <laughs> and of all strikers who have played three games so far, Harry Kane has the lowest number of points to show for it. So that's Calvert-Lewin, Callum Wilson, Aubameyang and Josh King all with more. I had Harry Kane in my team, obviously, for a while, yes. and now I don't. Um, I think a lot of people are going to have done that. Mm. I think it's just, it's one of them, really. I think there's lots of issues at Tottenham, and I think they run deeper than just Harry Kane. But if you kind of look at his performance against Chelsea, he was playing so deep. He was just playing so deep, and Spurs need, need him to stay up front. But I think it's just a frustration that... Obviously, the move to City didn't happen. But well, he'll turn it around. He's too good of a player not to, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he will do. But perhaps will he turn it around quick enough for the fantasy football managers that have got him before, before he gets <laughs> transferred out? 
Right, so again, join our league, 997-6717, our Sky Sports Fantasy Football League is still open. Right, let's have a look at the team of the week. Um, and we have our second Arsenal yes. player of the season making the team of the week with Ramsdale in goal. Yeah, I was going to say that. We said we had one last week. We've got one this week, like buses now. Yeah. He, Aaron Ramsdale, he's got now two clean sheets for Arsenal in Premier League. And some fans question, Natalie, why have Arsenal gone and spent £24 million on a goalkeeper when they've got Leno? But he may now well be the new number one. And if you compare him and Leno together, you've got Leno who... For me, he's more of a shot stopper, whilst Ramsdale is stronger in the air, he's stronger at distributing. And with Mikel Arteta liking the way, obviously, Arsenal play, how City play, I think it's that distribution is what is key for Mikel Arteta. I think that's probably why Ramsdale, if he's not already, will end up being Arsenal's number one. What do you think? Yeah, for sure. I mean, he's not going to get dropped now, is he, after those last two performances? So he's picked up 14 points this week, starting 11, seven for a clean sheet. He got an extra two for saves, for the bonus saves point. And then the one, to be honest, Carl, I was always surprised mm. about. He's picked up three for being man of the match as well. Yeah. Um, now, I only watched the highlights. So, and, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, the high, highlights are deceiving. So I'd love to know what Arsenal fans thought of it. But from the highlights, obviously, I just thought Odegaard would have been man of the match. But hey, he got it and he's picked up the points. What that says to me, if your goalkeeper is man of the match, it says that you've not been great. Do you know what I mean? And that kind of does indicate how Arsenal have been so far this season. But fair play because he was up against it. Some fans were questioning him. Some Arsenal fans were questioning him. And he's performed really, really well. And that's brilliant. Yeah. Great and they've got Spurs at home at weekend. So, I can't wait for that. It's just yeah, difficult, too. isn't it? Because both, like we're saying Spurs had a, have had a tricky start, but they've done all right, you know. I know they've not been great the past two games or so, but they've, they've got more points than Arsenal. And But anyway, let's see what I happens. think they've only, they've only had one goal from open play Spurs this season. I don't know, I might have made that up, but that is like, I'm sure that's some mad stat like that that I've read. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. Let's move on, shall we, now to defence. Shall we? Yes. Do should we do players? the? Should we do? So we've got five in defence this week. Should we do the three Chelsea players first or second? <laughs> I don't know. I think we should split them up. We shouldn't have that many Chelsea players. Oh my yeah. word! It was like, like first up, if we go Matty Cash, let's do an Aston Villa player first. Yeah. Um, scored his first goal for Villa, and um, played his part in keeping a clean sheet for Aston Villa, and then I watched just the highlights. But to me, and I know I got again highlights. A, a bit deceptive, but that looked like the best Aston Villa have played for me. Yeah, and in the second was, half especially, yeah. Especially, yeah, and the new signing, Leon Bailey, looked really good. I think if Villa didn't have Manchester United this week, he would be my one to watch, Leon Bailey. So, Ooh, is that who's next for them? Yeah, so okay. they've got a difficult game coming up, but Leon Bailey re looked really, really good, and I think he'll settle in well at Aston Villa. Yeah. Yeah, and Matty Cash there getting a goal. Obviously, love to see a goal from a from a defender because he's picking up um, mm. clean sheet points and and a goal point as well. And it's his first Premier League goal in thirty three appearances yeah. for Villa. So I don't know how many more goal points he's going to get you this season for all those players. Well, for the uh, how many percentage yeah. of players have got him? The one point six seven percent of you that have him. Yeah. But if you did, you got a goal from him this weekend. I saw Jackie Grealish as well. He he Instagrammed and he he like said, "Oh, really proud of you, mate." Sort of thing because obviously Jack Grealish still keeps an eye out for those games. But yeah, fair play. He's got the same haircut and now he's scoring. Now he's scoring like Jackie Grealish. So fair play for Villa. There. Jackie Grealish, are you mates with him? Do you know him? Yeah, we we get our hair dyed at the same place. <laughs> we, that's where we go. We sit next to each other. I want to see you in a headband next week, please. I will. I will. When it's a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Right, shall we do, let's do Cancelo before let's we do, do Cancelo. The, the three Chelsea players. Um, so Cancelo getting 11 points this week. Obviously City had the 0-0 against Southampton at the weekend. So he's picking up clean sheet points, starting 11 points. But he's also picking up bonus points for his passes and his tackles, which mm -hmm. um, is incredible. I mean, Cancelo's, Cancelo has had a great start to the season. He is, he's been well, consistently playing for City uh, for, for a number of reasons. Um, and I think in terms of pet roulette, he's yeah. one of your safe choices. Yeah, he always seems to come out on top, doesn't he, with pet roulette, really. And he's one of the defenders, Man City defenders, that we say week in, week out, we always get you bonus points for passes. Like, how many times do we need to say yeah. that now? Um, yeah. So, Jao Cancelo, great play if you can get him in your team, £9.5 billion, pounds, selected by 10.9%. But it's a big week, isn't it, this week for City, Natalie? Chelsea, PSG, Liverpool... 
mate and we've got some injuries as well not that that's an excuse at all but I'm just just sort of mentioning here but yeah what a week we've got coming up um yeah Chelsea away PSG away then Liverpool away like these are the weeks you live for as a fan though right yeah definitely definitely you'll you'll fill those stadiums won't you you fill your allocations for those games won't you yeah all right let's move on <laughs> um a Chelsea defender shall we Thiago Silva uh, three Chelsea defenders. The first is Thiago Silva. It was men against boys, Natalie, wasn't it? If you watched that second half, Spurs against Chelsea. And Silva was just dominant. He was a threat in both boxes. He was a dominant in both boxes. And for me, I know you're a City fan, I'm a United fan, but Chelsea are the favourites for the league for me. Yeah. If you look at how Thomas Tuchel changed that game as well, he always seems to have answers. He swapped Mount at half-time for Kante and it just changed the game. It did. And it's just kind of, they've obviously got the personnel there and they've got a manager who knows how to use them as well. Yeah, I mean, they've conceded, you know, in terms of the defensive players particularly, mm. they've only conceded one goal so far in the Premier League this season. I mean, having said that, that is the same for City and for Liverpool. And obviously City have Chelsea and then Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. But they are so, so defensively sound, Chelsea. And yeah, I think I've had them as favourites, you know, from the start of the season. In terms of Thiago Silva... He obviously didn't start the first two games, came on as a sub in the Liverpool game and then started the Villa game and then started at the weekend as well. And I think we're going to see his percentage selected by go up um, if he sort of if he holds down this place. Because at the minute, he's only selected by 2.35% of players, which considering how good he is, yeah. like, I find that really surprising. Um, and I saw on the BBC website this morning as well that Michael Richards has said Michael Richards has said he's one of the best centre backs in the Premier League. So that's you know, sort of high praise, so I'm going to expect to see his numbers going up. Yeah, it's a bit of a bag. And if you look at someone, another Chelsea defender who's selected by more players, 22% of players have selected Marcus Alonso. And I mean, what a season he's having under Tuchel, isn't he? He is now, Natalie, the second highest scoring player in the game. Not the second, yes. highest, not the second highest defender in the game, the second highest scoring player in the game after me. Wow. And it's just mad. How mad is that? I was doing my research before this and I was like, Surely that cannot be right. But he is. He really is. And he got you... Mate, I'm getting my team up to see if I can oh. get him in it. <laughs> get, him, get him in. He's got you extra points for an assist, clean sheet and shots on target as well. £7.9 million pounds for the second most... Um, second most... What do, you, what do you call it? Second most highest Chosen. player in the Selected, game. Selected, yeah. You know what I mean? What's, like flipping it. Points wise, sorry. Yeah, and he's in, he's in, in terms of the top 1% of... of of um, players, he's, he's in 17% of their team. Yeah, so yeah. it's worth doing, isn't it? Yeah, I guess it's just with their fixtures coming up. So obviously they've got City at the weekend, but then after that they do have Southampton and then Brentford. Mm-hmm. Um, not an easy one of fixtures, you know, Southampton and Brentford looking solid, obviously. So maybe maybe I'm going to hold off a couple of weeks. Yeah, do it. And there's another Chelsea player that you could pick from that list. If you didn't want Thiago Silva, if you didn't want Marcus Alonso, you could get Rudiger. And for me... He is one of the best defenders in the league so far this season. Previous seasons, I've not been sure on him, but this season, he's been great. And he got you a goal and a clean sheet this week with, I got you think he got your total points of 16 points. And he is now the third highest scoring defender in the league. And he's cheap, 9 million. He's cheaper than Trent Alexander-Arnold, Van Dijk, Ruben Diaz. So if you need another option, a high scoring defender, look at him as well. Mate, how's he getting bonus points for shots, by the way? <laughs> isn't it? Like a centre back, like an actual centre back. That's nuts. nuts! Oh my gosh! In the top one thousand teams in 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 the game, he's in sixty seven percent of the teams. Wow! There you go. Wow! That speaks for itself, doesn't it? That's nuts. Okay, right. So there's a couple of definite Chelsea players to be looking at. Probably not not next week because obviously they're playing City and they're going to concede. But the week after. <laughs> Let's move on, shall we, now to midfield. And I'm going to make a bold statement here, Natalie. Right. We've got, in this week's Team of the Week, we've got a midfield three of St. Maximan, Saar and Rafinha. Each one of those players is going to get a big transfer this summer because they're playing so well for the teams this season and they've done it in the past in the Premier League. I think they're just going to get a big move. I think one of the big clubs are going to take them. Let's start off with Ismail Saar, shall we? Since his Watford debut... He's the highest scoring player for the club with 21 Premier League goals. Uh, well, not Premier League goals, but league in yeah. general. He did in Championship weren't he, last season. But for me, he's got a similar style of play as his Senegalese teammate, Sadio Mane. And he is the highest scoring midfielder in the game. 
How it's you not safe. I find it nuts that he's a midfielder. Exactly. And I think that's probably why he's the highest scoring midfielder yeah. coming forward, isn't he, really? And I think that's why for seven, eight, seven point eight million pounds for the highest scoring midfielder in the game is a bargain again, isn't it, really? Yeah. Fully, and they're the kind of the ones that you want to, you know, that you, you're sussing out. You're thinking, okay, he's a midfielder because someone like Raheem Sterling, he's a striker in the game. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, totally. He's a, he's a great, a great back. And we, we must have done him as one of our ones to watch so far. If we haven't, we'll have to. It will. I'm sure he will be in the coming weeks. He was in my team at, at the start of the season, but then I took him out just because I was like, oh, he's not really doing it. But he probably won't do it for you week in week out because he plays for Watford. But he will get you these kind of. Group yeah. of goals like he did against Norwich. Well, if you move on now to St. Maximum for Newcastle, Newcastle, Newcastle yes. haven't won a Premier League game since the opening day, right? But still, Maximum performs. Still, he stands out. Do you know what I mean? Mate, it's like his stats are, are nuts at the minute in terms of obviously he's had, he scored a goal um, and he's, he assisted last week as well. He's had more shots and more shots on target than Lukaku and he's yeah. creating key chances. Like, his stats at the minute are crazy, especially when you think of considering it's, it's Newcastle. I know that's the thing, isn't it? It's all well and good playing well when you're playing a top four side, a top six side, but he's doing it week in, week out for Newcastle, who aren't having the greatest start to a season, are they, at all? So this is why I'm thinking these types of players who are at the lower side of the table teams are going to get picked off, I think, next summer. I thought a few of them would have been picked off already, but um, Rafinha who is the next one along, midfielder. He was your one to watch last week, Natalie. Oh, well, Mate, he was. That. My when he God. scored on the Friday night, I was fully, like, cheering. That's yeah. how, you know, you, you, get, you get properly invested in And that's, again, mate, that is the reason why I can never have a Man United player in my team, because I never want to cheer for them. <laughs> never. Like, yeah, that's points. No, I never want that. Because yeah. when Rafinha scored, I was, like, generally buzzing. <laughs> yeah, no, fair play. And I was like, because it was kind of like a cross, wasn't it? And Rodrigo kind of got over it. I was like, has Rodrigo just touched that or has he not? I was like, I yeah. bet Natalie was like, no. But yeah, fair play. If you've, got, if you've got Rafina though, you've got to keep an eye on him because I know it's on the app. It's got, you know, when it gives you a little exclamation point. Yeah. You're like, oh my God, what's wrong? He's showing his 75% chance of playing because he's picked up a knock. So for everybody that's got him, keep an eye on that. Yeah, and it said that for me with Mendy last week with Chelsea goalkeeper. And I was like, oh, yes. 75% chance. I'm sure he'll be fine. He wasn't, so... It is definitely worth keeping an eye on that right up until last minute on Friday when you can change yeah. them. Let's move yeah, on sure. now to our strikers, Natalie, to Mohamed yes. Salah, who is the highest scoring player in the game. And no wonder he's selected by a massive 49.65% and he's in 93% of the top 1K teams. Never. 93%? I mean, if you've got the money to buy him, you've got to buy him, haven't you? Well, we've, we've both got him, haven't we? We both have him, so yeah. Um, He's my cap. He's my banker. He's my captain. So he was my captain last week, which means that he scored 15 last week. Obviously, I did him as captain, so I got 30 from him. I'm just leaving him as captain. Yeah, you might as well. He's got Brentford away, then City at home, and then Watford away. So three easy fixtures there coming up. Really? No, 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 no. I just live for it. I honestly got, live for it. Just winding me up. He got a goal. He got assists. He was man of the match. He'd had well lots done. of shots. Like he's a banker. You've got. I think. I feel like you've got to fit him in your team. You just got to. Yeah. Even if you can't afford him, I did say if you've got the money, go and buy him. You probably don't have the money, but shoehorn mm. him in. Sell someone. Get him. Work. He's getting your points, isn't he? Yeah, for sure. And then Ivan Tony alongside yeah. him, who I also have in my team. Well, I think he's. Be, I think he's my one to watch in the first week that mm-hmm. that we what? what we did to this. I I love him. I I just think he's really cool. He's really composed. He's managed to step up from the from the championship, you know, with with variable e, very typical, that's not a word, is it ease at the minute. Um, mm. he he's so obviously this week he scores from a penalty. He took the penalties last year, he takes the penalties, and he I mean he's a master penalty taker. He scored 15 of the last 16 penalties that he's taken in English league football. Like yeah. that's nuts. The guy is just so cool. He scores, you know, he scores penalties and he, and he got a penalty at the weekend and he got an assist as well, which is why he's getting up there with 13 points and he was one of the match. I just love it. He just looks like a real Premier League striker now, doesn't he? I mean, there's some strikers that kind of can do it in the Championship but can't do it in the Premier League. He's definitely not one of them. Um, I've got a stat for you here, Natalie. I, I picked this out because I knew yes. you chose him in the first week. Since the start of last season, excluding playoffs, Tony has scored 33 goals. That's more than any other player in the top four leagues. That's no mad. Way. What a stat that is. That is absolutely mad. That includes like 
Salah, Kane, yeah. whoever. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I can't Absolutely. believe that. Um, but wait, before you go and rush him to put him in your team, if you've not already, the upcoming fixtures are difficult, aren't they? Yes. Liverpool at home, West Ham away, and Chelsea at home. Oh, my word. I'm going to stick with him, though. I believe in him. I think this is his time to really step it up. Yeah, no, it could be. It could be, but you've just up against two good defences there, aren't you, with Liverpool and Chelsea, so it might be tricky for him. But if not, after those three games, he's cheap, isn't he? £7.9 million pounds is worth getting in. Yeah, yeah, fully. I have him and Salah and Lukaku is my forward three. Obviously, Lukaku didn't really get any points this week, but I think that's, like, I'm, like, I'm definitely set on that. You know, it's taken me a while. To, yeah. to, to, I'm definitely set on those three up front. Yeah, no, sure. Very good. Yeah, because you had a move around, didn't you? You had Son, then you had Kane. Um, I've had loads. I've moved around I've moved around a few times so I'm finally you know, hey you know what's it, what did I say I got 79 points last week I feel like I'm finally cooking yeah yeah. taking a while consistency consistency yes that's what I'm going to do now I'm going to chill right uh, our game week six wants to watch who mm. are you looking at this week who am I looking at I'm looking at Damari Gray right for my one to watch I have highlighted him before uh, but he's never been my one to watch 1.5 million pounds from Bayern Leverkusen and he is now well on his way to be one of the bargains of the season, isn't it? Damari Gray and Everton, they're up against Norwich and that's why I've highlighted him, to be honest, because Norwich have conceded 14 goals this season. So Damari Gray and other Everton forwards or midfielders, if you're choosing Damari Gray in our game, will be licking their lips. They'll be looking to get on the score sheet and 58%, Natalie, of the top 1K teams Agree with me, and I've got him in there. Fifty-seven percent. I did fifty-eight percent. I didn't even think it was as high as that. Um, and I checked, and I was shocked. But he just looks rejuvenated under Rafa Benitez, does Damari Gray. So yeah, Damari Gray is my one to watch for this week. Oh god, yeah, that's a shout. That's probably got me thinking. Who's yours, yes. Natalie? Who's Poor yours? Poor Norwich. Poor Norwich, by the way. Um, so my one to watch this week is Alan Armstrong. Um, now, obviously, Southampton had that great nil-nil draw at City at the weekend, mm-hmm. and uh, they, I mean, they looked solid. They were they were really well organised. He could have had a penalty, perhaps should have had a penalty, yeah. which we know uh-huh. in this game would have got him a point as well. I don't know if he'd have taken it. I don't know who takes the penalties for Southampton, but hey, if you're winning it and you're the striker, you're gonna have to peel it out of my hands. Mm-hmm. Um, he so I watched a bit of the Championship last season, which I think I've said before, and obviously he was. He was incredible in the championship last season. And I've been waiting for when he, when he went to Southampton, I was, I was really, really chuffed, you know, because similarly to Ivan Tony, wanting to see what he can do in the Premier League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So far, in terms of Southampton, he's had more than double the number of shots than any other Southampton player. So in that team, he's the one that's he's, he's having the shots. Southampton looks solid and they're playing Wolves. Now, I say Southampton looks solid, obviously, they've not won a game yet, they've had loads of draws, but they, mm-hmm. it's going to click for them. Like, it is going to click for them. Um, Wolves, they're playing Wolves at the weekend. Wolves struggling to keep a clean sheet. I think they may have one clean sheet so far this season. So I think him, um, 7.8 million, it's a decent price. It's around about the same as, as Tony, who I think is 7.9. And I just feel like he's got the talent. It's going to click in the Premier League. It's going to click for Southampton, you know, like in terms of a win and not just a draw. So Alan Armstrong. No, good shout. I like it. Because he would look really lively, didn't he, against Manchester United. When I watched uh, that game when United got a draw there, he looked really good. I was like, I've not seen him before. And I thought, oh, how are they going to fill the hold of Danny Ings going to Aston Villa? But now nah, he looked decent. So, yeah, good shout. Yeah. So, we'll see. I'll be cheering for him if he scores this weekend, as I do, flitting around, I cheering for people. I didn't know if I could just hear your washing machine again. Was that your washing machine on your chair? No, not not nothing this time. It's silent in here now. Yeah, it's it after what the week when my dad came in making a drink and yeah, the love of zooming. Yeah, the love right. of zooming. That's it, right? Good luck for this weekend. Who, how are you feeling about your team for this weekend? Um, I'm still a bit nervous because Mendy's obviously like seventy five percent, but I think he'll probably get back in time for the City game. Um, Tanganga was off last week with his red card. Duffy's back. I swapped Duffy for Webster. So I'm feeling confident. I just need to get organised and get it all ready. I'm sure it'll be fine. How about you? I just want to make a change so that I'm covering a captain for every game. Mm. So I'm just going to take a little look at that. Um, And then obviously keep an eye on Trent to make sure he's going to come back because I've got him in the team as well. But yeah, 
All right. And do you know what? I cannot believe this, Carl. We have done a half an hour show and we've not mentioned that goddamn CR7. We've done it. We managed it. He, he's, he's living rent free in your head. I forgot about him, but he's there. He does score. Do you know what I mean? He scores week in, week out. So we don't even mention him. But he'll be back next week in the team in a week. I'll mark him on my list. He'll be back. I hope not. <laughs> I've liked not speaking about him for once. <laughs> right, so thank you very much for watching us again. You can still join our Footy Accumulators League on the Sky Sports Fantasy Football with the code 997 Yes! Memorize it. 997-6717. Best of luck with your picks this week. We'll see you next week. Bye.